Is it wrong or sinful for women to preach or teach at churches, conferences, Christian seminaries, and universities when, when men are present? That's the question. Is it is it wrong? Is it wrong or sinful for women to preach or teach at churches, conferences, Christian seminaries, and universities when men are present? That is the question. One of the things that I discovered when I was preparing for this live is that uh, in the clip that I'm about to share with you, the the speaker uh, mentioned about Corey Ten Boom preaching. And she went out all over the world preaching the gospel. It sounded like it was it sounded like the, the, the voice that was uh, introducing uh, Corey Ten Boom at the time. It sounded like Billy Graham. But I'll let you be the judge of that. You tell me what you think. Seldom in one's lifetime does one have the privilege of meeting or working and hearing a person who is a legend in her own lifetime. Cora Ten Boom was the first official woman watchmaker in Holland. And during the Second World War, she and her family helped protect and save many Jews. Because of that, she and her family were condemned to the concentration and the death camps. Her father was killed, her sister, and the week that she was to die, she miraculously escaped. Since then, she has toured the world, preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, winning many to Christ by both her writings and her preaching, did y'all hear that? Sound like Billy Graham said by both her writings and he clearly said and her preachings. Now, again, you know, I, I'm not trying to be petty or anything. I'm just I'm just making sure that we understand that if it's if if it's rules for thee, it has to be rules for ye as well, too, for me as well, too. So um, <clears throat> but that's that's what was being communicated and being stated here i i want to um let me do this let me let me read to you uh elizabeth elliott's bio okay a portion of her bio from inspirational christians I'll, I'll post the link uh below in the description a true pioneer in the world of christianity Elizabeth went to Wheaton College and studied Greek because she desired to translate the Bible for the remote regions in the world. While at the college, she met Jim Elliott. After graduation, Elizabeth went on a missionary expedition to Ecuador with other students from Wheaton, including Jim Elliott. In the first year of their ministry journey, Jim and Elizabeth worked in different regions. A year after encountering Ecuador, Jim joined Elizabeth in the Quechua Indian tribe. In 1953, Jim and Elizabeth were married and continued to serve in Ecuador. They had a daughter, Valerie Elliott Shepherd. When the Aqua tribe in eastern Ecuador killed Jim Elliott and his missionary partners, Elizabeth refused to give up on the people in that tribe. She continued to live in the region with her daughter and Rachel Saint, the sister of another one of the missionaries that the Aqua tribe killed. They lived among the Quechua tribe. While living in the Kachua tribe, two Akua, uh, two Aka men, uh, Aka women, excuse me, lived with Elizabeth for one year. During that year of living with the two Aka women, Elizabeth came to understand why the tribe killed her husband and the other missionaries. The tribe feared that outsiders were going to come into her, their tribe and take away their freedom. With that understanding, Elizabeth and Rachel Saint were able to go to the Aka tribe and build relationships with them. Look at the phrase. They led the people of the tribe to Jesus. That's a good thing. They led the people of the tribe to Jesus. The tribe saw and understood the forgiveness and grace that Elizabeth and Rachel extended to them. Elizabeth wrote two books while she lived in Ecuador that contained her experiences and Jim's experiences with the Aka tribe. She wrote Through the Gates of Splendor, which gives an account of her and Jim's experiences with the Aka tribe. This is one of the things also, and, and Dinah, you can you can verify this as well when I read it. 
she also taught men in that tribe to to be to become pastors she would privately teach them the word of god and let them preach on the lord's day or whenever they gathered you know in their in their in their village and in their in their uh, town but she she did it privately she she didn't she didn't try to lead these men and pastor these men publicly she did it privately just like priscilla and aquila did in acts 18 and i'm going to read that in just a moment but i wanted to put up this, this other little warning here it says as doctrinally sound christians we need to be really careful not to do the exact same thing that disciples of false teachers often do let our sentimentality or love for an evangelical legend override biblical standards and commands or give our favorite teachers a pass on sin yep we, we all need to be we all need to be careful and um and, and, and mindful of that I believe we, we definitely need to be careful and mindful of that 